Hey there guys, Steve with you here and today I'm talking about the in-body scanner. This is something that I use in the clinic for most of my clients because it's so handy for monitoring progress over time in terms of health and body composition. Two things that, um, that a lot of my clients are super interested in. So what I'm gonna to do today is go through the result sheet. This is what you'll get after your scan and you might have one of these already in front of you and, um, and the idea is that uh, you'll have an understanding of what each of these markers mean so over time you can look to improve uh, your body composition. So starting off, the body composition analysis up here, you've got your total body water, so um, this is how much water weight you're holding. This is often surprising for people, so 26.5 uh, litres of water there, and that's really going to show up in our total weight as well. So often, we can have a really high body weight, but a lot of it is actually water weight. And what we've got to look at there is in how much muscle and how much fat you're holding. And that's something we're going to do here. The protein, this is how much protein is in the muscle. So this is correlated with... Um, with muscle mass, so obviously the more muscle we have, usually the more protein we're holding in those muscles. Uh, this number isn't too bad as well. You've got a reference range on the side just here, and that tells us how um, how we what what sort of range it is for the person's gender, age, and height. Minerals. This is uh, the inorganic matter that's in our uh, fluid and also our bone. So this is good to track over time, just for a marker of overall health. Someone who's quite sick won't have much bone mineral density and uh, that number will be small, but this number is pretty good for the person. Body fat mass is next. So body fat mass is a, a number that records everything in, uh, well, all the fat in the body and the fat being the internal fat. So this is the stuff that's uh, known as visceral fat and that's the stuff we want to be concerned about and also the subcutaneous fat. That's more the surface level fat that we can actually see. And as we can see there, 22.8 kilos, which is on the higher side. If we look at the reference range there, and we've also got to compare that to the muscle mass as well. And then the sum of all, everything above there, you can see that this person is uh, 59.1 kilos. Now, we're gonna dig into that number a lot because there's a lot more going on than just our weight. We've got to look at our muscle and our fat. That's something we look at now. So as we can see here, the muscle fat analysis, this is the range for under, this is the normal range, this is over range. The weight here, uh, 59.1 kilos. Okay, let's dig deeper though. Of that, the muscle mass is 19.6 kilos. So this is definitely on the lower side. So what this person's going to want to do is to get that number higher. And the body fat mass, coincidentally, well not coincidentally, this number is higher, 22.8 um, kilograms of body fat. And this is known as a C-shape because their weight is up, muscle mass is down, body fat mass is up, that's leading to a C-shape. This person's holding too much body fat, not enough muscle mass. Now, when we talk about the shapes over time, what we're looking to get is either an I that's having balance between muscle, weight, uh, muscle mass and body fat, or a more athletic shape, which will be a D shape, where our weight is, um, weight can be around the same or somewhat smaller, the muscle mass is up and the body fat is down. That will lead to a D shape. And that's um, something that we can, that won't happen overnight, but we can definitely aim for something close to a D shape after coming out of a C. Digging deeper into the obesity numbers here. So this is when we look at our body fat a little bit closer. BMI is one, body mass index. So this is something we don't look at, uh, we don't look into too much, but it is good to have uh, for people who are monitoring their BMI, their doctor might be monitoring it, their, uh, their insurer, health insurer might be monitoring it. It's also the number that the World Health Organization uses, and it's pretty effective for uh, judging obesity on a population, but there's so many exceptions when it comes to individuals that we don't look into it too much. For example, Michael Jordan, uh, the basketball player, really strong, tall, athletic, he's considered obese uh, according to the BMI metric. So there's a lot of um, there's a lot of room for area there. What we do look at, what we really like, is the body fat percentage. That's the yeah. And um, this is the uh, body fat, fat mass over your weight, over your total body weight, and that equals a percentage of 
for this for this 38.6. So they're definitely holding too much body fat, and um, the percentage percentage of them that is body fat is too high. We can see that with the over mark there. We want to get this way down into the normal range. So this is pointing to someone who is holding too much body fat and not enough muscle mass, and we're looking to reverse both of those. Digging into the lean analysis here. So this is an indication of muscle mass. It doesn't mean muscle mass uh, only muscle because it's really judging everything that is not body fat, and it's telling us where it's dispersed in the body. Left side to right side, upper body to lower body, and in section here. So what we can see here, their upper body is looking pretty normal. 100% is, is the, the goal, what they're looking for. And they are in the normal range and holding balance between two sides there. The left to right here, they're here, here they're in the, in the lower body and you can see they're under the, the range they should be. So this is really indicative, someone who's under in the lower body and not in much muscle mass as we've seen here. This is indicative of someone who is uh, usually, usually middle-aged to, um, to elderly and someone who is sedentary. So they're not using their legs enough. Usually somebody who's sitting a lot, has an office job, and they're just not holding the muscle mass or lean mass around their lower body. So we're going to look to change that through our exercise and, and uh, nutrition. Midsection here, this is how much, uh, how much lean mass they're holding in their midsection. And that's looking normal as well. Moving on to the fat analysis, so this we can see they're well over in the, in the left to right side, uh, 193%, 192%, and 200, 263%, so over all around the upper body there, and you can see they're probably holding just general mass in the upper body as compared to the lower body, and uh, most of the so we're looking to change that as well. The lower body, body uh, relatively normal, that's a little bit of healthier state, as we mentioned, we're underweight with the lean mass there and we're normal with the fat mass there. So we're looking to, to, to boost up our leg exercises here. Next one we're going to look at is visceral fat. So visceral fat, this is really important because this talks about the fat, fat that's around our organs uh, that can lead to toxicity around the organs and stuff like metabolic disease, uh, heart disease, uh, obesity has got a lot to do with visceral fat as well. And really an average number. And if is 10, anything above a 10 is uh, definitely a problem. And this person is sitting at 11, so that's uh, a bit of a red flag. That's something we're looking at. We want to get that a little bit lower. And, um, you know, around the, the single digits at least is what we want to be going for. With waist to hip ratio, so this is uh, pretty much telling us how much mass we're holding around our midsection, which is important for a lot of people's aesthetics, their goals there. And if they're wanting to lean down, this is usually an area that we can lean down in. This person's over their reference range, so we'll monitor that over time and look to gaze to hip ratio down. Uh, this is a, this is a evaluation, just an example of how ineffective BMI is. The person's clearly uh, clearly holds a lot too much body fat, yet they're considered uh, normal in terms of BMI, but their percent is over. This is your total score. So 66 out of 100, 100, 100, 100 is the best score that you can get. Uh, not a great score. We're looking to get that higher. And um, really, when we're at the start of our exercise regime or uh, health regime, you might not be sticking around this number. But over time, we'll be looking to get that uh, higher. Calorie expenditure, it comes out with this, like what sort of calories we're burning. Look, we don't, look, we don't take into that, that into account because there's so many factors that influence our metabolic rate there if we need to. Metabolic rate, this is a good one because it, it tells us how much, how many calories we need just to um, maintain. So we, when we look at uh, body composition, we, we're either maintaining the body composition we have, we're either gaining weight or losing weight. So we'll be eating more caloric, caloric surplus if we're looking to gain weight. If we're looking to lose weight, it needs to come into a caloric deficit. If you want to stay around that same range, it's telling her that she needs to be eating 1,154 calories. And this can really be important when we put our numbers into an app like MyFitnessPal or Chronometer and we're monitoring our calories. And um, given that she um, wants to lose weight, or lose body fat, we're looking to, to up our protein. That's sort of another topic though, that this is more of a snapshot. It doesn't break down the, the macronutrients that we need. And that is the body, uh, the in-body scanner, guys, and what it comes out with. It's a super effective tool. I use it for all of my clients, 
and uh, people who are regular clients as well, you can come in and see me and do a scan whenever you like, scan just $40. And usually people do these every month or so if they're serious about their body composition or have got some goals uh, in that light. So um, if you are interested some more, send me an email on all the social channels or hit me up at steve at barefoothealth.me. Book in your scan and we can sit down and set some goals together. Thanks a lot, guys.